Hey guys, welcome back to another flashlight review video and I'm so excited today to show you a new light from Sofern. This is the SP31V3 and it's Sofern's newest tactical flashlight and I am just loving this light because it includes everything that I could want in a tactical flashlight, a mini tactical flashlight you can carry around in your pocket and it also comes at a fantastic price and Many of you would know that I'm a regular user of 18650 tactical flashlights. I just think this form factor is perfect for carrying around while still remaining powerful enough and providing that sustained runtime. Find that those 14500 cell or 18350 cell flashlights, although they're smaller, you know, you don't get too much juice out of them, especially if you're going on longer walks. So the SP31 V3 is the newly released version of the SP. 31. That's been out for quite a while now. So I think the initial version was out in 2016. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it's definitely this version anyway has earned its place in my top three budget tactical flashlights. There's, there's so many of these tactical style flashlights out there, but they lack that one step shortcut to turbo and as well as a proper momentary mode where you have half press on this tail switch. So both of those are included with the SP31 V3. Let's have a look at what you get in the box. Okay, so this is the box that you get. Pretty basic box. If you guys have dealt with Sofern before, you know they don't use any sort of fancy packaging. And you know, you've got the model of the flashlight, the emitter there, and the temperature. You've also got a bunch of accessories. So you've got a USB-C charging cable. You know, you've got the 18650 battery included lanyard couple of o-rings and of course the light itself and just love that so fern include everything that you need in the box Alrighty, so here are a bunch of other flashlights that i have in my collection i just wanted to compare them to the sc31 v3 and you can see this is the workhost td02 i thought this would be a really good comparison actually because i think they look very similar but there are some significant differences so the SP31 V3, it's got a side switch. It's also got a proper tactical tail switch, unlike the TD02. So you've got that half press access to momentary mode. You don't have that with the TD02. And of course, you've got the Sofern SC31T. And the big difference I would say between these two is that this one, the SC31T, uses a reflector, whereas the SP31 V3 uses a TIR lens. And the buttons are a little bit different as well. You can see metal button, rubber button. And uh, of course, I think this anodizing is superior. It's just a nice matte black, very grippy anodizing that Sofen are starting to use on their new flashlights. Alrighty, a little close-up of the SP31 V3. And I really think Sofern are on the way up. I just love how they take and apply feedback from the flashlight community. And it's definitely working as with each iteration that they make, they just do these little tweaks that add to the overall quality usability of the light. And the machining, as you can see on the SP31 V3 is excellent, especially at this price point. There's no rough spots, inconsistencies. The cutouts here you can see on the head are very well done, low key. And there's some deep knurling as well on the battery tube, which really adds to that extra grip so the anodizing like i mentioned before is very grippy and i really like that they've been just using this new matte black anodizing but you know different from that glossy finish that they've used on their earlier lights that i think at times look a bit looks a bit tacky this matte black finish feels grippier and looks more premium in my opinion the clip is improved as well and it's something i also noticed on the sf16 i believe the uv flashlight it's a much more rigid clip and it feels a more high quality so notice with some of the earlier Sofern lights you'd bend the clip and it'd be too easy to sort of pull it back and you know I always talk about just these small touches that manufacturers use to finish their lights I think if they can get these small things right then the rest of the light should be fine you've got this new tactical switch here on the back as well so half press for momentary mode and I really like the fact that they've included a metal switch, which is definitely going to last a lot longer. I know with some people having the 
rubberized version of this switch. Some people who've just used their lights quite often tend to wear out that button. So that's not going to happen with this one. It's the same one that they have on the IF22A. But yeah, overall, the SP31 V3 feels very durable. And like I said, it reminds me a bit of that Workos TD02, except it's now a proper, it's got proper tactical functionality with that tail switch. Looking down the bezel, you can see here it's an SST40 recessed as well with that TIR lens and the glass lens on the front. That bezel is also glued on, so I was hoping to be able to unscrew it. You probably could, but yeah, they don't want you getting in there, probably void the warranty. No crenulation as well. The light takes an 18650 cell like I was showing you before, and it can only unscrew from under the head. For some reason, the tail switch is glued on. So yeah, can't take, can't sort of get in there. The sofa and don't really want you getting into the tail. There is also onboard USB-C charging. So you can see you really got to push that straight in there. It's not going to come out by accident. All right, so I'm just going to demonstrate the UI just to show you how the light works. So you have to activate tail switch first, okay? So you can half press for momentary mode. That remembers the last mode that you had it in. So you can set it to turbo, you can set it to low mode, for example. Okay, now if you full press, that just allows you to have that constant on output. And all you do is just press this side switch to cycle between low, medium, high, turbo. Low, medium, high, turbo. Okay, pretty simple. So I just set mine to turbo, I switch it off, and then that way I can have access to that one step uh, momentary turbo. Now there's a hidden moonlight mode, so you press the side switch and the back button after okay, to get access to that moonlight mode. I like that they've made this button also a battery indicator. There are also some hidden additional modes in here. So while the light is on, basically just hold the side switch and you get a strobe, as you can see, press it again, goes into the SOS mode, one more time and it goes into beacon. To go back to the normal modes, just press and hold that side switch again. All right, so I ran a bunch of ceiling bounce tests and you can see here with the SP31 V3, I get basically close to a minute of runtime. I'd say about 40 seconds of 40 to 45 seconds of 100% before the light steps down. It's got this sort of staircase pattern there where it slowly steps down and by the five minute mark you're on about just over 40 percent output about 45 percent output so it's not a huge step down but yeah you're going to get about half the output after five minutes also ran a test on the high mode and you can see here pretty much lasts a hundred percent all the way into just before the 15 minute mark at which point the light steps down to about 75 percent ran a third ceiling bounce test on the medium mode and basically just holds a hundred percent for the entire duration of the test i ended it just after the 42 minute mark. Alrighty, so here are a bunch of tests I ran on my Opel Lightmaster Pro. And you can see here, these are also figures based on switch on. The turbo motor got 282 meters of throw, which is so impressive for a light of this size. It's that TIR lens, just being able to focus that light to a concentrated beam and even on high, nearly 200 meters of throw. And it's a sustained output as well, you know, up to the 12 minute mark. So very impressive. CRI range from 64 to 66. So definitely on the low end, it's more a light designed for visibility. And you can see that the CCT was between 5,500 to 5,700. So it wasn't actually 6,000 to 6,500K. And I was comparing it to my TD02 and I noticed it was a little bit warmer. Overall, the SP31 V3 has a surprisingly throwy beam and does produce some decent spill as well but you need to ramp it up to about medium or high in order to see it properly all right some considerations i thought i'd mention in this video the light does have an sst40 in there which is a, you know a basic sort of led which is pretty bright forms very well but i do think an sft40 would have been better in this light i hope maybe they offer that in the future not a hundred percent necessary but yeah, I just think it would increase the throw and definitely the, the candela, of course. So yeah, this seems to be the, the standard in the SST40. 
standard for most of these 18650 lights out there. But I think for these tackle flashlights, that SFT40 or even a Nosrum W2 would really be ideal. Second consideration, and it's more of a design suggestion rather than an issue. I just would have liked to see Sofern implement this USB-C charging under the bezel. You know, I've seen it done on a lot of other flashlights where you just unscrew and underneath the you know the USB charging ports just underneath the bezel and then you yeah, basically remove the cell by unscrewing the back. And I know it's much more of a premium feature, but Sofern have done it on one of their larger tactical flashlights and I'd like to see them implement it in their smaller ones. There's no issue with this one, but I think it just gives a much an overall a nicer look and also prevents issues like if you have the port cover open or if you hit it or something like that, just prevents it from being damaged. Overall, the Sofa and SP31 V3 is one of the best value tactile flashlights out there right now. I found it so difficult to fault this one, especially at the price point. I mean, it comes with everything you need straight out of the box. And, you know, when I started collecting flashlights, I wish they had something like this around with such good value and you know it's got a few years of different iterations under its belt as well so if you're interested in this one go ahead and check the link in the description I've got a special discount voucher there where you can get the sp31 v3 if you have questions about this light as well just leave them below in the comments and i will get back to you i'm sure i've missed out on a thing here or there and again, if you like the video, if you found it helpful, do me a big favor and click the like button. That's how YouTube recommends my videos out to more people. And if you want to see more flashlight reviews and keep up to date with the latest news, make sure you subscribe. Alrighty, Sofern SP31 V3 on turbo. Really large hotspot, as you can see. And you know, on these high modes especially, you can see how much spill there is. Making easy work of that tree there. But it's all the way, I mean you can see all the way out into the back. Very easily with this light. And the good thing is that it doesn't step down. Immediately, it takes a couple of minutes for it to actually step down. So, yeah, let's cycle through the different modes. All right. So that's the first mode. Okay, it's not moonlight, but uh, yeah, one of four steps. Can't really see it. Second step. And even that second step's not too bad. You can see it already illuminates that tree. Maybe to the middle of that field, or to the back, not really. But this is decent enough for a walking light. And yeah, there is some spill, a little bit of spill, but okay. Third mode, now this is probably your best kind of, you know, the brightest sustain output mode. Okay. So it doesn't really step down. It does step down a little bit, but that's only after about 12 minutes. And I mean, that's really perfect beam. Does manage to get right at the back of those trees, slightly illuminating them. Okay, of course, you've got that turbo mode, and that really makes a huge difference there. All right, I'll go for a little walk just so you can see the beam profile. So for an SP31 V3, and this is on the lowest mode, besides moonlight that is. So basically low, 
Uh, yeah, probably, you know, anything from a few meters, you're okay. There's a lot of ambient light out here too, so you can't really see it all too well. Now that second mode, this is where things get quite useful. I mean, this is sustainable, doesn't step down at all, and pretty much bright enough for, yeah, well, for any sort of trail, if you're doing a bit of a bushwalk or something like that, you know, this is really bright enough. I mean, you can even reach, I almost see the trees right at the back. Okay, the third mode. Now we're getting serious. And the trees at the back are illuminated. You can really see everything underneath those trees as well. Great visibility. But uh, turbo, as you can see, is, I mean, that is really powerful I'll go for a walk so you can see what this light looks like the beam profile 